Today's exploit isn't quite as scary as the ones I've covered previously. In fact, since it involves Facebook, a lot of you watching this aren't even going to be uh, vulnerable to this at all. But the Facebook Messenger's Rooms feature, so this is the app's video chat feature, it had a bug that allowed an attacker to access sensitive data on the phone when the attacker had physical access to the victim's phone. Now you might be thinking, oh, this sounds like a nothing burger. Isn't your device automatically compromised once somebody has physical access to it? Well, not exactly. You see, smartphones, they don't have the same kind of security model as laptops or desktops because they have different encryption modes like before first unlock or BFU, that's when a phone is off and then you turned it back on for the first time and you probably noticed that things like biometrics don't work, you have to enter your full phone's passcode. And then you have after first unlock or AFU, which is the mode that your phone would be in if it's on but locked and in your pocket and it's still able to be unlocked with biometrics and things like that. So there's technology like Celebrite, which law enforcement has been using for many years, which generally can make very easy work of phones that are in that AFU mode, but they can usually only brute force a BFU device. So BFU, obviously much more secure. I mean, it's kind of intuitive if you've ever restarted your phone and it told you, hey, biometrics don't work. You gotta enable your, you gotta use your full passcode. Desktops and laptops, they rarely have any kind of encryption built into them or built into their OS unless the end user actually sets it up. Uh, but Android devices, Apple devices, they automatically do basic encryption for you. So this is why data that's recovered on something like Windows or Linux is really just as simple as booting from a USB and then mounting the drive that has the data you want on it. And then you can just copy off whatever you like Unless, of course, someone did BitLocker encryption or full disk encryption to that device. Uh, but this exploit, it doesn't require a Celebrite device or anything like that. Uh, and it can be pulled off in about one minute with physical access to the victim's phone, as you'll see here. So there you go. You host a messenger room and invite an account that's active on an Android device to join. Then you can call the victim's phone. Most sensitive features are still gonna be locked as they should be since the screen hasn't been unlocked yet. But that prompt to join a chat in the upper right-hand corner is bypassing those restrictions and letting this guy access the gallery. He also, uh, it didn't show in this uh, video here, but he also had the ability to make posts from that victim's phone. Uh, so imagine you do that to a public feature and they happen to have a spicy meme on their phone in the gallery and you post that meme from their phone and then they end up getting fired. Uh, this actually reminds me of a very similar bug that iPhones had many years ago, maybe 10 plus years ago at this point, which is kind of crazy to think that iPhones have been out that long. Um, but when that quick camera button was added to the lock screen to allow someone to use the app without unlocking your phone, which is a really good feature because before, like say that you were out somewhere and you wanted just a random person to take a picture of you, you would have to unlock your phone and then give it to that random person, which can obviously be very risky. They can go through your phone or they can just straight up steal it. Like you, you know, you unlocked your phone. Um, but the first release of that feature 
it had a problem where you could tap on the picture after you took it and then it would just open a person's gallery and show that the stranger you asked to take the picture, all of your personal photos, uh, no password was required, no biometrics. I mean, this was before iPhones even really had biometrics. Um, so yeah, it's kind of funny that this is still going on uh, with these types of applications in 2021. Now, there's no need to freak out because this vulnerability has been patched by Facebook already. And they actually paid the security researcher $3,000 uh, for the bug bounty, which is pretty decent, especially considering that uh, this isn't a remote attack. You know, it's not something that a person can just do over the internet. Uh, it's not even really proximity based. It's not like a Bluetooth attack or anything. It literally requires physical access to the device, which a lot of people would consider a device to be compromised at that point anyway. Um, so, as long as you update your version of the app, you should be safe from this specific type of vulnerability. At least you're safe for now because there will be more bugs. And no, that's not some far-fetched prediction that I'm making. That's pretty much the most reasonable assumption given the circumstances. There's other major vulnerabilities that Facebook has had this year alone. And if you have Facebook Messenger on your phone, you're probably running more proprietary applications that are just a catalyst for similar vulnerabilities, including proprietary applications that are made by companies besides Facebook. Part of the reason for vulnerabilities like this are permissions. So the Facebook Messenger app, it asks you for permission to access basically everything on your phone when you install it. It's a bit of a meme at this point. Now, there's an argument to be made that these permissions are necessary. And maybe they truly are. You know, Messenger is, well, a fully featured messaging application. It does a lot of things, so it needs a lot of permissions. But can you really trust Facebook with these kinds of permissions? You obviously can't from an ethical perspective because Facebook has no ethics. They only care about money and increasing the power that Facebook has in the world. And their various surveillance applications like Facebook Messenger are the tools that they use to do that. But even if you refuse the red pills about Facebook, it's still clear that their security sucks. If the Zuck, you know, even if the Zuck really cares deep down in his reptilian heart, Facebook is still managing to release vulnerable applications that can be used to hurt their users. And they aren't always quick to fix these bugs. This one uh, was actually a bit of a different case because it was fixed in a matter of days. But back when Messenger was very early in development, there were bugs that researchers were disclosing to Facebook, and some of them took as long as six months to patch. So for the sake of your own OPSEC, you should either avoid using these applications altogether because even when Facebook and Google's applications are working correctly, they still have a spyware component to them. They are still gathering data about you. So either avoid the apps or mitigate the security concerns of Facebook by using those apps on a device that's separated from the rest of your activities, I guess a spook phone essentially, or put sensitive pictures in an encrypted folder separate from Messenger that cannot be accessed without a passcode.